How to write the theory section of a research paper. In this video I will talk exactly about that. In another video I've talked about the structure of an empirical research paper. The theory section is typically section number two. In the theory section we might talk in more detail about the def definitions of key constructs. We will introduce our theoretical framework and we probably will introduce and develop our research questions and or hypothesis if it's a deductive paper. Let us think about how to write a theory section in more detail. There are actually many different ways how to write a theory section of an empirical paper. I think we can distinguish essentially two different types. One is more the deductive approach and one is more this inductive approach. The deductive approach is often used in quantitative hypothesis testing studies where you run surveys or panel data and you propose a, a hypothesis and then you test them. Confirmed, not confirmed. Inductive studies are very often exploratory in nature, very often qualitative research based on interview or different types of text data. These studies have different purposes and then also slightly different styles in writing. The deductive approach is fairly standardized. There's almost a boilerplate. You should follow this way of writing, including in particular also the theory section. Well, so for a typical deductive study, you would start with the literature review. Very often it's a rather brief one. In some cases, not even that is necessary. But what is important is that you develop your theoretical framework. Sometimes it's integrated literature review and theory framework in one section together. And then you would develop your specific hypotheses. In some cases, it could also be research questions. Inductive approaches are very different. There's no such boilerplate as for these deductive quantitative studies. What these studies usually have in common, they provide a somewhat critical review of the literature and they might develop or might, uh, might propose their research questions. No matter which approach you pursue, one thing both types have uh, fairly in common is that they provide a literature review. Uh, for a literature review, if you would like to perform one, you will probably start with checking different databases such as EBSCO, ProQuest, Web of Science or Google Scholar. There you will identify relevant and related literature. When writing the review uh, for your research paper, I would usually recommend to focus on top journals or major journals and also the journals where you're targeting uh, your uh, paper to. At the same time, you might want to consider also some lower ranked journals particularly if the articles are closely related to your own research interest you know, of your research paper. What is important then in the written literature review is that it's up to date. It sounds very obvious, but sadly, very often I see papers where the last five years have not been considered. Yeah, so perform and, and uh, uh, review the latest literature, yeah, the last five years, and also the older literature and if it's 20, 30 years ago, maybe even so, if these are key and classical works and you would like to cite the major work that has been used and cited because you're also entering a debate, you know, how people in the past have discussed it and how you see it. In the literature, it's important not to be only descriptive. Study A found this, study B found that, blah, 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 blah. It's just like listing different findings. No. That's not how we would like to write a literature review. Quite the contrary. You would like to integrate, combine and summarize prior research yeah, and emphasize key commonalities and also provide a somewhat critical review. Yeah, because based on that, that's also how you can make your contributions later on, yeah, where you show these are certain weaknesses and you can help understand these weaknesses or gaps. Of course, when criticizing other work, be very careful. For one very simplistic reason, maybe your reviewer 
will be the person that you have criticized so fiercely. Yeah, and that person might not like it. But also it's common courtesy. Yeah, be careful uh, when criticizing. And uh, if possible, avoid second citation that you cite someone that has been cited someone else in another paper. Always try to go to the original. Let me talk a bit more about these deductive papers. Most of the uh, articles I review for the journals where I'm ed editor of are quantitative papers. Many of you also write uh, quantitative papers, I can imagine. In quantitative papers, you, you would usually develop theory and test theory. And what most uh, authors typically do is they propose a theoretical framework. Here, what is extremely important is to build a coherent theoretical framework based maybe on one theory, two theories, maybe three theories. The important point is here, coherent framework. If you use maybe two theories, these two theories should be integrated into one theoretical model. Now the opposite would be we have five hypotheses and for each hypothesis you have a different theory. We would call that fragmented theory because there's no unified framework uh, and most reviewers and editors do not like it because there's no consistency. It's a, just a random collection of ideas and tests. No, we want to test a model. We want to write about a story, one consistent story. And likewise, we need a consistent and coherent theoretical framework. Your theoretical framework should explain all hypotheses. I think that's extremely important. Then, uh, what I like is typically to visualize your framework into a figure. And there you can nicely see all the relationships and hope, uh, ideally would label each arrow and boxes. Yeah, like the examples here you can see on the right hand side. Yeah, that's a typical uh, theoretical framework uh, which uh, I used in one of my recent papers. These figures also help you to think about your model yeah, when you're at the development stage. And later on, I would recommend you also to print such a framework in, uh, in your paper. And typically, I would recommend it to do it upfront because such a framework can also be used as a roadmap that helps the reader to understand in which direction you're going and what kind of hypotheses you're developing later. So in a deductive paper, you would start with a literature review, then pro uh, provide an overview of your theoretical framework, and then you would develop more specifically your, each of your hypotheses. Here I would like to repeat and emphasize. You would like to integrate your theory into hypothesis development, and all hypotheses should be explained by your theoretical framework. In such a deductive research paper with hypotheses, you would typically have three to seven hypotheses. And the typical structure for each of these hypotheses would be as follows. You would start probably with defining key constructs because A is related to B and you might want to introduce A and B. Sometimes you've already introduced A or B in the introduction on the theory section, so you don't need to repeat it. Yeah, but still, sometimes you might elaborate a bit further here in this uh, uh, hypothesis uh, section. And then you would upfront state your expected hypothesis. You might do, use some indirect uh, wording. We argue that A is related to B yeah, or this and that. Upfront your statement. And then that will be followed by theory driven arguments related to your theory. And then you might want to give some examples so it's more easy to understand. And then later also you might want to refer to some existing related research, related evidence that would support your argument. And then at the end you would formally state your hypothesis H1 uh, and then uh, your hypothesis would follow. And for each hypothesis, you might have one, two or three arguments and then followed by examples and related research. Now we have come to an end of this video. Let me conclude. 
in the theory section, you will provide an up-to-date integrative literature review. Then if you have a more deductive type of paper, then you would also develop an integrative theoretical framework and then develop theory-driven arguments and hypotheses. Doesn't sound so difficult, huh? Good luck! That's it for today. Bye-bye!